The Prime Minister has announced that lockdown rules in England will be eased from Saturday for adults living alone and single parents with children under the age of 18. They will be able to form what's being called a support bubble with another household. It means a grandparent can go and stay with their grandchildren and no longer have to social distance. Or a couple who've been kept apart by lockdown can now spend the night together. Or a single parent can link up with their own parents or a friend. The rules say you can only choose one other household for your bubble, but you won't have to register that and it's being done on trust. Boris Johnson said the measure was to help those who've been particularly lonely during lockdown. Here's our political editor, Laura Koonsberg. Keepers, not crowds, have fed the penguins in the last few eerie months. As we creep out of lockdown now, the birds and animals will soon have company again. It was sort of getting to a point where we didn't really understand why we couldn't tape in, so the news is really exciting. Zoos, safari parks, outdoor cinemas can reopen, along with shops from next week. As long as you're well used to hearing by now, everyone keeps their distance. And for millions of humans in England, life will soon change indoors too. From this weekend, we will allow single adult households or single parents with children under 18 to form a support bubble, a support bubble with one other household. All those in a support bubble will be able to act as if they live in the same household. For single mum Becky and her mum Alexandra in Gloucester, that could mean a real life reunion soon after weeks of very limited contact. The comfort for me of being in my mum's house, having a cup of tea or having dinner with her. And for my little boy, having a roast dinner at his nanny's on a Sunday is everything for him. So we will, I, I can't wait to be able to do that. How, as Prime Minister, have you allowed a situation to arise where a child can go and look at lions at the zoo, a single relative will now be able to go and have Sunday dinner with their family, but in many situations that same child might not be able to go back to school until September? We would like to be in a position where we could have got those, uh, the remainder of primary uh, back for uh, a couple of weeks before the, the summer holidays. We, uh, we wanted to, to do that if that was going to be possible. Uh, clearly, we've got it right down, but it's not quite down far enough to change the, the social distancing measures that we have in, in our schools. Labour claims Boris Johnson just is not taking proper control. Drive-in cinemas, safari parks and zoos can open. And yet we can't get more children back into school. That is real, really a disgrace. And the government have been asleep on the wheel. So government need to do much more to ensure that our young people can get back into school. And that will also help their parents get back to work. But life's still limited livelihoods too. By Easter time, Funland's fun fair should look like this. Instead, it's all packed up in an empty field in Devon. This is the Dodgems that should be out taking money and entertaining people. The owners have no income and no idea when the waltzers will be able to spin and the dodgems be driven. No one is letting us know, the government is not letting us know what the situation is. And to be quite truthful at the minute, we're desperate. The gradual journey out of lockdown is now underway. Caution may be wise, but for so many families and firms, the moves are painfully slow. Laura Kunzberg, BBC News, Westminster. The Labour leader, Sir Keir Starmer, has renewed calls for a national task force to get schools in England up and running again. Speaking in the Commons, he said the government's plans were in tatters. The Prime Minister said there was a very big plan to get all pupils back to school by September and that the government would give more details next week about a summer catch-up programme. From Southampton, our education editor, Bramwyn Jeffries, reports. Streets quiet in the rain. Teenagers stuck learning at home, not school. Next week, Chelsea will go back for some lessons. It is still a little bit weird because I know it's not going to be like it used to be. Already on her mind, next year's GCSEs. It makes me feel a little bit worried because I knew that if I was at school, I'd be getting like the most out of my education to be able to technically pass my GCSEs and get good grades because I have my teachers there to support me. At least we still have the help at home and I'm still trying my best to do the work. So I know that I'm not going to miss out on as much as I would do if I didn't do the work. Morning. Hi. 
competition state temperature. Chelsea's school already checking visitors. Year 10, first back, two metres apart wherever possible. That's the current government advice. When we measured our classrooms, we could get a maximum of 12 students per classroom if we maintain a two metre social distance. If that's been reduced to one metre, we can only take an additional three. So at any time, the school can only operate at a maximum of 50% capacity if it was removed to one metre. Today, the PM challenged the over plans for England's schools. It must have occurred to the government that space would be a problem, that there would be a need for temporary accommodation and classrooms. They built the Nightingale hospitals. Why are they only starting on schools now? Mr Speaker, he still can't work out whether he's, in, whether he's saying schools are not safe enough or, or whether we should be going back more quickly. I mean, he, he, can, he, he can't have it both ways, Mr Speaker. To get all of England's children back into existing school buildings by September would take either some pretty big changes to the government's advice or very part-time schooling, so no easy choices. In Wales today, more advice for schools on their June reopening, with teachers' unions warning it's too soon. The rest of the UK waiting until August to welcome more pupils back. For parents like Darren, it's important risks are managed, but he's keen for his son Ethan to be back in school. You can't beat the teacher-student interaction. And, and, the, and the thing about it as well, the teachers that I've spoken to at his school, I think they're missing the children as much as the children are missing them because it's, it's, it, it really isn't the same. So, like I said, if everything's safe, I'm, I'm, you know, the sooner that they can get back, in, 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 the better, really. Schools are just about keeping up with current plans. For September, they want plenty of warning. Brown and Jeffries, BBC News, Southampton. Let's talk to Laura Koonsberg in Westminster. So more easing of lockdown restrictions today, but claims that uh, many more lives could have been saved if restrictions had come in much sooner. That's right, Sophie, and quite some claim made by Professor Neil Ferguson, who was one of the scientists who was part of the group that was advising the government on the science at the early stages of this pandemic. Important to say that he actually stepped down from that committee after claims about the fact that he himself had been involved in breaking some of the lockdown rules, but still a very eminent scientist and somebody who was absolutely critically involved at those early stages. And talking to MPs today, he suggested that if the lockdown down measures had been brought in a week earlier than as many as half of the deaths could have been avoided. Now, of course, he was talking with the benefit of hindsight. He himself said that the information that was around at the time and the quality of the data was very, very poor. But when asked about this today, the government scientists and the Prime Minister were notably very reluctant, really, to start talking about the decisions that had been made at that early stage. They kind of said, well, look, now is not the time. Certainly from a political point of view, the government wants to focus on what will come next. But I think it is fair to say that the list of criticisms that is being put at the government's door for their early handling of the crisis is getting longer by the day. But this is, of course, a very, very complicated situation in all of this. Professor Whitty, the chief medic, said today, if you don't understand that there's no comfortable way of handling this, then you haven't really understood what is going on and what it's really all about. But I think that goes for the policies and the plans themselves, but certainly for the politics of it too. Laura Ginsberg, thank you.